Hi everyone, so this is uh, part B of the second part of the equipment that I always carry with me in the suitcase. Um, again, as usual, it's taking a little bit more time to explain, uh, but I think um, I'd, I'd like to get everything in, um, in in a reasonable time when I'm speaking. So, um, we left off at the uh, cutlery. Uh, I always have like spoons and some um, uh, chopsticks with me in, in, a, in, in a Ziploc bag. So. Next, moving on from that, we have stationery. Um, I do, again, carry a lot of stationery with me. You will probably know that um, from my other videos. I'm going to try and move the camera a little bit around. And see if I can focus it here. Uh, trying to just stand as I go. There we go. So I have um, Mont Blanc stationery, uh, toffee brown, light uh, Irish green ink, and Pacific blue ink. I love writing letters. I love writing notes to friends. And, um, if I need to write any kind of note, I like using those colours. Um, Swiss Army knife. This is the Work Champ model. It's I think it, it's the, I think it's the Work Champ model. Um, but I I love this um, hand. No correction. I think this is the Handyman. Yes, correction. This is the Handyman. Um, I love this tool. I, I call it my fabricators tool because I can do a lot of stuff with this. Um, so with with that and with the um, the the Marlin spike, I can I can pretty much um, do quite a bit of um, tool work. Just doing travel, I can fix quite a lot. Uh, Post-it notes and a notebook wherever I go. I love carrying post-it notes, they're just so useful, especially because I'm still an academic, I'm a student, I'm a researcher, um, I, I work, you know, I, I don't fully go to work, but I, you know, it's kind of a mix. Um, so, in that kind of like bookworm kind of field, um, no, uh, no, uh, post-it notes are absolutely essential. Sta first stationary pens and pens and sharpies and so on. I uh, wherever I go, I always have a lot of pens with me. I make no apology for that. I love stationery. I always have done and always will do. Um, so I take inks and stationeries and pens that I like with me, and uh, that is that. Um, I have uh, an aluminium card holder. This is from Muji. Just a simple aluminium card holder. Uh, one thing that I learned when I was working was, if somebody gives you their card, never ever uh, throw it away um, I tend to I have two boxes of cards at home one of uh, immediate priority as in the people I work with and uh, the people in my field and so on and second uh, secondly are uh, what I call um, will be useful can be useful uh, people I meet um, I might meet someone to give me their card I'll always keep it on, on the back of the card I will write in pencil or in pen preferably in pencil if possible uh, where I met them uh, and that just creep. I mean, a few years later, I might meet them again, or sometimes, uh, you know, if I make a friend, I, I can always remember where I met them first. Um, never, ever, ever throw away a card. Um, I once got a card from an, a very, very, very senior uh, engineer who was my instructor, and um, he, you know, he was like right, right, right at the top of, of the field, still is. Um, he, but he, he, he's an American, he's ex, uh, United States Air Force, um, and not, not only that, he's like one of the top, top, top lecturers in the world, and in, instructors in the world, and he gave me his card, and mm, I, many years later, I needed to speak with him urgently, um, and I had recently just got a new phone, and I hadn't synced the numbers, and I, it was a mess, so... I went back and I found his card and I managed to speak to him and he was fantastic. I mean, he was in another country. He wasn't in the States. He was in another country. Um, the phone actually went to his wife <laughs> because he left his mobile with his wife um, because he was in the field and his wife managed to get a message to him through local channels. And literally a few hours, I think it was about six or seven hours later with time difference and so on, he rang me back and said, you okay? And I was like, yeah, thank you so much for calling. And, you know, I was so humbled that someone like right at the top level uh, of engineering and of like the military and so on could j just call me back um, because I really needed their help. So never, ever lose a card. And that was like maybe 
two and a half years after I had at last seen him because he was he travels he's like the top person so um i I was just so humbled by that and that was one of the things that um as I mentioned the accountant um i I've received so many good tips from accountants who work in my uh, in engineering and science engineering science and aviation I cannot tell you just so many down to earth tips and this was one of the uh, tips that I received. like I said about the iron shirts in my other video in my dress video this was actually one of my the tips the same accountant gave me never ever lose a card always keep it and organize it and um I live by that and in here are a couple of thing a couple of cards from some very important cards include that person's card even though I have a backup but I still keep it um and uh, just some travel people when I travel some people who are connected with travels and hotels and flights and so on I have their cards and it's very helpful so always keep some cards with you you never know who will help you and also be prepared to 100% to help anybody else because one day you you're going to need the help we don't live in a, we don't live in a world where it's just me 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 it's not ever always about you it's about contribute and sort of lack of a better term or whatever karma will come back to you the wheel will come back to you and that, that kind of thing um if you do good good will come to you uh, you know that's got nothing to do with religion or faith or anything that's just simple down to earth logistics in a way um and and i can testify to that so yeah another good tip so and then i always i did um i did a video on my um uh my uh, wash kit uh yeah, I did a video on my wash kit, so everything is just there from last time. Um, I also then keep a ball cap. I'm not a big ball cap wearer at all. Um, I I just wear it if it's really insanely sunny. Um, that's all I really wear it for, but I'm not really a ball cap wearer. I like ball caps that you can put patches on. The good thing about them is... Uh, you can remove them. So another tip when you... Uh, I, I love my pirate patch. This is actually a glow-in-the-dark one. Um, let me just quickly try and see if I can get an extra light onto it. If you just bear with me. Uh, I'm just going to put it next to the um, uh, the lamp. See if I can just get it um, like that. I'm just going to switch on quite a bit of darkness. So there's my pirate patch. I love that patch. Um, yeah, so I love I love um, a cap that you can put patches on and then remove them. When you go abroad, try and be very, very sensitive to the patch you're wearing. Um, it might seem cool or funny to you, especially a lot of patches that um, I've seen, and no offense, but I've seen a lot of Americans, British uh, people wear patches with, uh, that frankly are a bit, are sexist. Uh, if you wear that patch abroad, you will get in serious trouble. Also, they've I've seen people wear uh, some political patches, and you know it might you might support someone who's from a political party. That that's your decision. That's your freedom. But when you go abroad, other people, other countries, um, their laws, their traditions, their culture respect that one hundred percent. If you're not willing to respect that, don't go. It's as blatant as that as that because you will get yourself in trouble um, and not always will your foreign office help you um, it could be the diplomatic chain diplomatic relations changed by the time you got there and you turn up with a a hinky patch um, and a customs guy well they're all police officers literally and they all carry handcuffs and they can arrest you anytime so you come you go into their country and they think well I'm not having that because it, he's already in a bad mood or she's in a bad mood from a political thing that's happened um you're 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 nicked you're under arrest and well you, you might be on your own because you know the the diplomats and so on they'll probably be busy trying to sort out bigger diplomatic problems than dealing with you with your you know so be careful it is as blatant as that when you go to other people's countries Show them respect, learn their culture, learn their language a little bit if something might be difficult, but say at least say hello, thank you, please, and that kind of thing. Um, try and understand their culture, do some research. Um, so that is important. Uh, I don't have any of those kind of patches, but I have seen a lot of people having those patches, and I, and I always think if you, you're going to get in serious trouble. Um, I'd probably even remove my pirate patch, but I've never had a problem with that one. I, I've traveled with that, and people have seen it, so... It's not really a problem, um, but I mean, especially the ones with you know female figure on it or with a, with a dodgy, 
quote on it or something, get rid of that. Don't don't even travel with that kind of patch. Uh, wear it in your home country where you can get away with it, where you know you can. Uh, but if you travel to another place, please just don't do that. And I thought I'd say that because it was a very, very important point. Um, right. So... Uh, in this big bag here is a lot of my medicine. I'm not going to show that. It's got my name and hospital number and so on and so forth. So that that big section there here, from here to here, is about two, two and a half weeks of medicine. It's a lot. I need a lot of medicine So because I'm very ill. So I probably that would probably expand double that size for about a month and as, then more if I'm traveling a bit more. So... But I always keep, in my suitcase, I always keep a two-week reserve of medicine because sometimes you just don't know, uh, with, especially with the travel, that, you know, with work and so on. Um, I keep two spare fountain pens. I love fountain pens. I love writing with fountain pens, especially when I'm extremely tired. Uh, if I write a, like a journal or a diary kind of thing, a fountain pen really calms me down. So I always carry two fountain pens in there. They're by Coeco, which is a German company. Uh, the clear ones with extra fine um, nib tip. Playing cards, a uh, a, a squishy j a silicone stress ball by this company. I love these. Keep life fun. That's a perfect motto. And again, by the same company. This uh, this is like a. It's, they call it a moon ball. It, it, it's like a hard, but it's a bouncy ball. Um, it bounces off ev pretty much anything. And it's a, it's a really really good really good um, like a stress ball um, just to throw at stuff and it's really really light. It's not going to damage the wall of a hotel or an apartment or anything. But it's just to relax. With also um, one thing that I um, um, I gave this to one of my um, female friends and um, she really liked it. But again, being really creative, she found another uh, uh, another um, thing for it. Um, when she travels and she gets tired, when she gets to the hotel and changes, takes off, uh, you know, uh, stockings or shoes or um, socks and stuff, she'll wash up, shower up, wash up, and um, put the sole of her feet onto here and then do that. If this was, if that's the ground, that's the ball, and then her feet on the, and she said that kind of really relaxes and massages the bottom of her feet and it kind of really alleviates the pain from walking around all day and stuff. So, and I actually tried that with this myself when she told me, and I agree, it's really, really useful for that. But also you can ch throw it at the wall if you're tired and angry, so. Um, this is a dry bag. I always have a dry bag with me just for equipment. Um, I hardly ever ever use it. I've only used this one once or twice maybe. It's practically brand new. It's always been in my bag. Um, but, um, I, but I always still keep a dry bag with me. Um, finally on this side I'll probably go, I'll, I will go around the other way to do the other side then. Um, I have a Canon a camera. This one is one of my first, it's actually my first Canon DSLR and it's the EOS 1100D. It's the, the basic one, but I wanted the basic one because it has so many functions and I learned how to do photography with that camera. Uh, I think it's now been, the newer model is called 1200D or something like that. Uh, but this one is the EOS 1100D. So just look up the latest model of that um, and buy it. I really would recommend everyone to have a, a Canon DSLR. They're just so easy to use. They're affordable, so easy to use. Uh, if you can't afford a brand new one, uh, buy a, a, a second-hand one. Um, if you live in the UK, there's a shop called CEX, Charlie Echo X-Ray CEX. Um, I bought two Canon cameras from there. Uh, that one was actually, a, I didn't buy that one. That was a present from my father. Um, I was actually go going to buy one, um, um, I had my credit card and I saved up and so I was going to buy one and then when we got to the payout check checkout counter he, he kind of said no 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 I'm going to buy it for you as a present so um, that was actually a present the, the both the lenses came with 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 the bundle so that was my first one and that was a really nice awesome present uh, but the other two that I bought were actually second hand uh, but in very very good condition and I will yeah, so the cameras. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pause the video here and I'll go around the other side and I'll do the other video on the second video. So thank you very much for watching and I'll get back to you. Thanks. Bye.